Option trading has so many confusing graphs and numbers, isn't it? Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills to help solve this very, very interesting problem to explain option trading in the simplest, humanly understandable way possible. And in this video, I'm going to go over put and debit spreads, a more advanced play in option trading. I will have three versions for you. Put debit spreads in one minute, three minutes, and five minutes all with real Robinhood demos easing you from high-level principles to nitty-gritty details. And as you know my style, you don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now without further ado, let's dive right into it. Good morning everyone, my name is Justin. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. And I'm here today to use my design skills to explain put debit spreads. Option trading is really like a video game. You do follow a skill tree. You do need to understand buying puts and selling puts before knowing put debit spreads. Otherwise, this video won't make too much sense for you. I have those links up in the corner and description down below. If you know all those, here's put debit spreads in one minute. A put debit spread is buying a put and selling another put at a lower strike price. It's called a spread because this position spreads across two strike prices. Imagine you're spreading a pad of butter. Same thing here, you spread from one strike price to another. If you open this 680, 685 put debit spread, you want Tesla stock to go down to stay below 680, the lower strike price. If you spread from here to here, you have a 70705 put debit spread, with which you want Tesla stock to drop below 700. It's called a put debit spread because once you open the position, your account will be debited some amount. You pay some money out of your pocket. For example, if you buy a 685 put and sell at 680 put to open this 680, 685 put debit spread, you need to spend $197 for it. It costs you $197 to open this position. And that's put debit spreads in one minute. Not too complicated, right? Now let's take a look at the three minute version. A put debit spread involves two option contracts actually. You buy one and you sell another one. The one that you buy will have a higher strike price than the one that you sell. This is always true. If it's flipped, it becomes a put credit spread, which I've made a video for it, link up in the corner and description down below. Robinhood will tell you what spread you open. So it's always good to double check it up here to see if you're actually opening up a put debit spread position. So how does it work? I pay 197 for it and then what? The concept is similar to buying stocks or just buying a put option contract. You pay first and then once you close the position, you will get more money than you pay for if you win or less if you lose. It's a debit because it costs more to buy a higher strike put than the money that you receive from selling a lower strike put. In the 680, 685 put debit spread example, you spend 197 up front because buying a 685 Tesla put costs you 3320 cash and selling a 680 put only gives you 3123. So the net is a negative 197. Fundamentally, if you remember from my put videos, for any put option contract, a higher strike put is always, always more expensive than the lower strike put. You can look at it right here. A 700 put is more expensive than a 690 put which is more expensive than a 680 put, so on and so forth. Therefore, it makes total sense that what you spend on a high strike put is more than what you gain from selling a lower strike put. As a result, it's a net negative, it's a debit, it costs you money. Is there a collateral or anything? Collateral only applies if you receive credits first, but since this is a debit spread, there's no collateral required from you. All you need is 197 to open this 680, 685 debit spread position. It's fairly straightforward. If by expiration date, Tesla share price is below 680, just like how you expected, say it lands at 650, you win. The 685 and 680 put option contracts will be fully in the money. So their prices will become 3.5K and 3K. You can then close the position or leave them in your account and let your broker close it for you. Not recommended, but it's an option. And in the end, you will get $500 back, which gives you a profit of $303. If Tesla share price ends up, let's say 690, above your highest strike put price of 685, both put option contracts will become worthless, $0 meaning you lose all 197 and that's the end of it. 
that's the three minute version and now let's take a look at the five minute version. In a put debit spread, you buy a higher strike put option contract and at the same time sell a low strike put option contract. Let's break it down one by one. If you buy this 685 Tesla put, your max cost is 33.20. You want Tesla stock to go down, go below 685. However, when you also sell a 680 put along with a 685 put that you bought, your risk profile becomes quite different. Selling a 680 put, you want Tesla stock to actually go up because that's how you profit. Juxtaposing these two contracts together, you can see for buying a 685 put, you want Tesla stock to fall below 685. On the other hand, for selling a 680 put, you actually want Tesla stock to go up above 680. You don't want it to go below. The net effect is that your max profit is limited, but you don't need to spend a crazy amount of money to make it happen. It only costs you 197 and you can get $500 back, profiting $303 in two weeks. The max money you can get back for a 680, 690 put debit spread is 1,000. That for a 680, 700 put is 2,000. You see the pattern? It's always the difference between two strike prices times 100. The outcome of any put debit spread has five scenarios. Using the same example, if Tesla stock ends below 680, you win. You close the position, get 500 back, minus the cost of 197, you profit $303. If Tesla stock ends above 685, you lose. You lose all 197. If Tesla stock ends at 683.03, you break even. You close the position, you will gain 197 back, so it's net zero. If Tesla stock ends between 680 and 683.05, you can profit a little bit. Let's say it lands on 681. So when you close the spread, you get $400 back minus the 197 that you spent, meaning a profit of $203. If Tesla stock ends between 683.03 and 685, you lose a little bit. This is a chart that I designed. I think it's more clearly described what's going on. You cannot really find this anywhere else. Robinhood has an interactive chart, but I think that's a little bit too mathematical. Not the best, but at least you have something to work with. So uh, why would you open a 680, 685 put debit spread versus just buy a 685 put? For advanced option plays like this, the answer is always leverage. Meaning you can use a small amount of money to win big. In the same example, you spend 197 to make 303. That's a whopping 154% gain in two weeks. Index funds only return about 10%. However, if you want to buy just a 685 put, it costs me 33.20. If Tesla stock ends at 645, I can close my position and get $4,000 back, profiting $680. Using 33.20 to make 680 is a 20% gain. It's still pretty good for a two week play. I can make more dollar amount, but compared to 154%, it's a big difference, right? If you only have $200 in your account or a small account in general, there's no way you can just buy a 685 Tesla put, but you can certainly do a put debit spread. Hmm, all right, I see the appeal right now. What's the catch? Well, let's do a comparison. Spending 197 on a 680, 685 put debit spread. If Tesla ends at 678, you lose all 197, 100% loss. Spending 3320 on a 685 put. If Tesla ends at 680, you lose all 3320, also and 100% lost. Uh oh. But look at it this way. Let's say your account only has $3,320. The bright side is you make more dollar amount. The worst scenario is your account will be wiped to zero. But if you only spend 197 out of that 3320 on a 680, 685 put debit spread. The upside being you make a higher percentage of gain. The downside is you only lose 197. You still have $3,123 in your account your account will not be wiped to zero. Hmm, all right, all right. Then when is good to use this strategy? There are only two scenarios that I can see myself doing this. One is I'm very, 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 very confident that the underlying stock is going to drop, it's going to go down, it's going to fall below the lowest strike price of that spread. And second, I have a very, very small account. 
I want to win big, and I don't mind losing a high percentage of my money in case things go south. All right, guys, that's how I see put debit spread in three different ways. Is the breakdown useful? Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. Buying puts and selling puts are still two very, very fundamental traits to understand in options. Do you ever wonder if there's a better and visual way to understand those? To get a sense of how they work behind the scenes? Actually, I've used my best design thinking and craftsman skills to capture those concepts in these videos. Check them out right there. Smash like button, subscribe to support this channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Tschüss.